You are working and notice a co-worker has fallen. They have cut their arm and are bleeding very badly. Do you know what to do? Good morning, and for my freshman exploratory project demonstration, I am going to show you how to control a bleed and apply a pressure bandage. Notice on my model's arm a finished bandage, which is what I will be showing you how to do today. I chose this as my project because I strongly believe that everyone should know how to control a bleed and apply a pressure bandage. If a person loses too much blood, it could lead to serious complications and or even death. First, you will need to get a first aid kit. In the first aid kit, you will find dry sterile dressing, a pressure bandage, tape, and gloves. Next, you will need to put on your gloves, but for demonstration purposes, I already have my gloves on. If gloves are not available, you will have to improvise with a plastic bag or anything that can serve as a barrier between your hands and the victim's blood. Next, you will need to get a piece of dry sterile dressing and apply direct firm pressure for five minutes. After five minutes, you will need to reassess the bleeding. To do so, simply lift your hand. If the blood soaks through, that means the wound is still bleeding and you'll have to apply another piece of dressing for an additional five minutes. After the bleeding is under control, you will need to apply the pressure bandage. Use your thumb as an anchor and go around in circular overlapping turns. While you are doing this, you will have to make sure that the bandage is not too tight, but snug enough to keep pressure on the wound. Now you will need to secure the end of the bandage with a piece of tape. After you have done this, you will have to check to make sure the bandage is not too tight but snug. To do so, you have to slip one finger between the bandage and the victim's one. If the bandage is too tight, it could cut off circulation to the victim's one, which could lead to serious complications. Next, if needed, I will treat the victim for shock and dial 911. I will treat the victim for shock because if the body loses too much blood, the cells will not get enough oxygen and will begin to die off. To recap, first you will need to get a first aid kit and put on gloves. Next you will need to apply direct firm pressure for five minutes. Then you will need to reevaluate the bleeding. If the bleeding continues, you will need to apply another piece of dressing and apply direct firm pressure for an additional five minutes. After the bleeding is under control, you will need to apply the pressure bandage. Use your thumb as an anchor and go around in circular overlapping turns up the victim's wound. Now you will need to apply the tape to make sure the bandage stays secured. Then you will need to check to make sure the bandage is not too tight but snug. To do so, slip one finger between the bandage and the victim's limb. Lastly, if needed, you would treat the victim for shock and dial 911. In conclusion, if you are faced with a situation where someone is suffering from a bleeding wound, use these simple steps that I taught you on how to control a bleed and apply a pressure bandage to a wound. In light of 9-11 and the thousands injured, this life-saving skill was used to save many people. Knowing how to respond in a situation like this could easily be the difference between life and death. Thank you, and this concludes my freshman exploratory project demonstration.